So the first thing that we knew, do in, in, in our office, our Office of Health Professions Education, is we always ask, what does success look like? Our, our vision in our office is to optimize education uh, to meet or exceed the needs of our, our colleagues, uh, our, our patients, our populations, anyone that's accessing our education. So we always start about, okay, if, if all goes well, what is this going to look like? So we, we talked about this. We wanted to make sure that our, our learners have an improved engagement and an uh, improved experience in the e-learning environment. My team really um, resides a lot in the e-learning environment, in that electronic training and learning environment. We wanted to make our modules more personalized and dynamic so that you know it almost would replicate a one-on-one -on -one experience. Uh, we have to have the ability to track and measure our learners' completion, um, as well as activity and pathways that, that, that they go down in that e-learning uh, environment. And we'll talk a little bit about why that tracking is so important. Um, and we wanted to leverage the benefits of traditional SCORM concurrently with the benefits of XAPI. And if I can spend just a second on the reason there is we needed to be able to do something that was fairly transparent to not only our end users, but also something that was going to be fairly manageable for our team who have been working in SCORM for a long, long time. And our, our end users are used to going into learning management systems. They're used to the reports that come out of our learning management system. So we really wanted to make this as seamless as possible. So the reason we needed to do this is, uh, let's start at the end. So. Uh, from a compliance standpoint, and the example that I'm going to give today is going to focus a lot on our annual compliance training. I think a lot of different uh, companies are very familiar with annual compliance training. That's what every employee needs to do at uh, some point in the year to be to be compliant with regulatory things. So in healthcare, we're a highly regulated uh, industry like others, and so we've got the Joint Commission, we've got CMS. If there's anybody in the audience that is in healthcare, you're going to recognize those uh, two agencies very well. So it's very important that we are compliant in the sense that we can uh, report and, and show record of our learners not only completing, but in the case that we're going to talk about, what did they complete you know, when they went through these modules. So we had a uh, you know, kind of a conundry. We've got, we wanted to take one e-learning module. Uh, and even though we try to avoid that whole one size fits all, in this case, we wanted one module to serve all, but we certainly wanted the content to be um, very adaptive. So it wasn't one content that fits all. So when you think about it, here's what we needed to do at a high level. We needed to take LMS um, SCORM results that we're all used to, and we needed to take LRS XAPI results so we could show compliance um, in, in these various pathways. In other words, not only did a learner complete annual compliance training, but within annual compliance training, on this slide, they went down this pathway. So all of you that are familiar with SCORM are probably going, oh yeah, that uh, SCORM doesn't do that so well. So herein lies the, the whole idea about using these two technologies, these two specifications concurrently. And that's what our, our goal was. So, we look at LMS and SCORM and your typical results are, okay, the person launched the module on this date and they completed the module on this date. We've done that for years and years and years. So what we're gathering from LRS uh, and XAPI is more of the granular stuff that's really, really exciting. And, and I'll be honest with you, this first uh, year was almost a proof of concept for us uh, and our organization to show this is how we'll be able to do this and then we'll be able to grow from a simple um, example that we're going to show today as far as uh, using XAPI. So the XAPI results are things like what the learner input, uh, what their role is, where are they located, um, what do they do within their role? Do they do certain procedures? Do they have privileges to do certain things? So this is where we really leveraged XAPI to give us that granular detail within the module that is uh, a little bit more challenging, if not impossible, for SCORM to do. So um, we learned about this, uh, as Tim alluded to, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, of going to conferences and DevLearn is one that I learned about this. Uh, I learned about how a module that uh, you publish in SCORM can send XAPI statements to a learning record store. And I, that really piqued my interest. This was back in 2018. 
is when I learned about this. And it all re relies on uh, a bit of programming and, and I'll be the first to admit, and so will my, my staff, we're not programmers. So this was going to be kind of interesting for us. You know, we're instructional designers, we're graphic artists, we're, you know, trainers, educators, we're not coders. Uh, and I have the ultimate deepest respect for people that do that work, absolutely. Well, we needed to find a way uh, that we might be able to do this ourselves. So we found that, that there was a way that we could add XAPI statements. We use Articulate Storyline as our main software for, for creating um, our e-learning and our, our, um, our learning management system is Cornerstone for anybody that's interested out there. And our learning record store we use is Watershed. Um, so we found that uh, uh, by adding XAPI statements to the main slide, uh, that we would be able to send XAPI statements from the Storyline module to our LRS URL. Um, and on these things, the triggers that would uh, normally trigger different activities in Storyline could trigger draw, uh, JavaScript. And I'm, I'll probably let uh, Rebecca talk more to this in just a few slides because she is really the, the instructional designer that really is the, uh, you know, the, the front line person that really learned this and was doing it. So in our world, in our annual compliance training, some of the things that we were identifying through some of these, these triggers were what role, are you a physician or not? Where are you located? And what is your scope of practice? Like I mentioned earlier, you know, we've got specific content, specific training that needs to be done if you do certain things. So we wanted to be able to, to, to be able to have pathways for that. So um, this is uh, uh, the master slide of our annual compliance training module, and and I'll have uh, Rebecca chime in here in just a second. But the this was really the key. I mean, this and this whole presentation is is meant to to give you guys some really practical, tactical information that you can hopefully implement in your own place, no matter what uh, industry you're in. So the whole thing here is, as you can see, uh, let's see if I can do this correctly. So over here. If you can see my mouse, um, it is a, a, a typical trigger in Storyline, and this one's going to execute JavaScript. So if you take a closer look at that, what we do on this on this master slide, and, and this has all been uh, taught to me from from Rebecca, is the the JavaScript on the master slide is executed actually at the very beginning, right when they when they open this module, they open this slide. This JavaScript, um, this JavaScript is actually triggered, and I've got an actual uh, example of that. Uh, Rebecca, if you are on the line, uh, if you can chime in here a little bit about uh, this is the information that you put in, correct? Yes, um, that is uh, JavaScript code uh, that, like Frank said, we are not coders, um, but there's a wizard that I walk and entered information and it populates this JavaScript code for me to literally copy and paste into this trigger and essentially what that code does is when the learner arrives at this slide like Frank said it triggers that JavaScript code and it will report all of the SCORM information for that slide to our LMS which is Cornerstone and all of the Zappy statement um, details is going to go to water it's basically um, direct that data to either cornerstone or watershed and then it also um, provides data that states that the learner interacted with a particular button on that slide and yeah, then and we're I'll able to, that to in just a second rebecca yep. Not to cut you off, but okay. I wanted them nope. to, I wanted the audience to, 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 to note what you were just talking about. So here is the code that shows that it's coming from uh, our, our, our LMS, and here's the endpoint. It's going to um, Watershed over here. So to Rebecca's point, uh, this is a, a much better view of that particular code. And Rebecca, I'm going to get to that slide that you were just talking about here in a second. Um, this is really the the crux, and and Rebecca will. Uh, we learned a lot from this, didn't we, Rebecca? That the, that master slide is really a key component, right? Yes. If it if that code is not on the slide that has your Zappy statements on it, then uh, your Zappy statement isn't going to go anywhere. <laughs> right. It's got to be at the master slide level, and it's got to. And all the the Zappy statement slides have to be, uh, for lack of better terms, children 
to this master slide. So we learned, <laughs> we learned uh, from experience uh, the, the, the benefits and the, the pitfalls of having too many master slides and whatnot. Thank you.